Joy for Rice and everybody. Leak speaking. This is Solo My Fly, also known as Milky Smooth. I wanted to follow up on the last video that I posted. Um, it was titled Abortion, Good or Bad, or Depends. And I know that's a, um, it's a pretty hard topic. Um, I'm the type of person I like to, I like to tackle the big things. I like to tackle the, the, the tough, the tough questions, the, um, you know, the big questions about life and, and things. And, um, you know, abortion gets a lot of, it, 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 it stirs up a lot of emotions, especially within me. And so, um, it was, it was a pretty, I didn't make that video too personal, but I was talking more about the idea behind abortion. Um, and just to clarify, uh, this video is to clarify, just to update on that last video. Um, I do not support abortion. Um, you know, I, I believe that women should not, they should not get abortions if possible. They should avoid it at all costs. And um, I like how the video, I'm going to do more videos like that, that um, actually, you know, more philosophical, I guess, um, that actually encourage discussion, that actually engage and actually, you know, get you thinking, actually question, question things, question your morals, question what you think about this world. Um, and um, I don't want to talk about abortion too much. I just want to put my opinion out there. But just to clarify again, um, I, you know, I believe that abortion is bad. OK. Um, however, I do have a I have a more open mind to, you know, to thinking that, you know, is not totally bad. OK. Now, I know people might disagree with that, but you have to I'm thinking in a, in a more worldly sense, in a more universal sense. OK. So just to say that something is good or bad it really depends all right and what i'm talking about i'm talking about from the heart all right i'm talking about from the heart is with love and when if you know the creator i had gotten to you know some discussions with people and um basically just uh my my standpoint on the thing is that when you're coming from a standpoint of love it's really whatever love allows you do okay so for example um had a commenter he was talking to me about uh yahweh's will and that there's no will other than yahweh and you know i i understand where he's coming from uh but i do believe that he's missing another aspect of that is that it's just not we're not robots we don't just obey what other people tell us to do you know why because our creator gave us a will and that will is his will but he loves us so much that he gives us a choice okay um i'm trying to stay focused on what i'm trying to say i got so much so much going on in my mind when i'm talking so i'm sorry if i'm if i seem like i'm jumping from topic to topic or i'm not finishing things is because when i'm saying something something else is going on in my mind and i don't want to lose it so i start speaking on that um which I will, I, you know, I will get better on by talking through this and talking to you guys, um, talking to my reflections. First of all, love. Okay. That is, that is what this life is all about. It's about love. We got to express love. And sometimes love requires you to make tough decisions. Okay. Now, if you don't believe that it doesn't, Let's go through a scenario. There's a there's a there's an infinite amount of scenarios where love requires you to make tough decisions. OK, let's start at a relationship. So you're in a relationship. It's a girl and a guy relationship. OK, I'm not with that homophobia stuff, um, but I don't support being gay and uh, lesbians. But at the same time, you're free to do what you want. OK, I still love you. You know, we all got things to work on. I think that is wrong. If it's not wrong, I will learn. But right now, I believe with my whole heart that is wrong. And I want to say that I know, but I don't know right now because um, there's still a little, there's still a little bit like that love allows me to allow other people to be free to do what they want. Um, hello. hello. So. 
what I want. Um, so you're in a relationship, right, with a girl and a man. Um, and you know, you that lovey dovey stuff that um, you know what they call it, puppy love. You know, when you get into it, you're like, oh man, it's a love. I don't even know. You know, you get around your friends, they'd be like, oh, you know, you start blushing. It's like, man, yeah, man, I think, you know, I think she's she's very special or something like that, right? All right, so that time passes. You guys are together for about a year or two. And things aren't the same as it used to be at the beginning, right? This is normal relationships. It happens. This is because relationships are not always meant to last forever. They, I mean, they do last forever in a big scheme, but for your life, you're on a certain journey and you intersect with people, right? And sometimes you cross paths, you go with each other for a while and then you split apart. All right. So that's what happens. And we have contracts with people with other, with different souls. You know, we've done things to people. People have done things to us. So we got to fulfill things and go through things together. We got lessons to learn with other people. So, you know, you think that this person is the one you're going with them, but life is like, all right, your contract is up. It's time to split, but you're trying to hold on. And life is like, no, it's time to split. But since you're alive and God loves you, you still have choices to make. All right. But God still has the up, has the will. You still have signed contracts. All right. You still made contracts, but you're you're trying to choose to stay with this person as you're going. But life is trying to split you apart. So, you know what life does? Unless you make that decision. But at the same time, it's like, OK, you got to split apart. So things start happening. You know, things start happening to your relationship that forces you to split apart. Like you start you guys just starting to get into arguments for no reason. Um, you know, things happen in these scenarios where, you know, okay, she thinks she, 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 she thinks that you're cheating on her now, or, you know, uh, something happens with a belonging, you guys, you know, get into a fuss about that. Now you guys are questioning each other and now you guys are questioning your love for each other. That's normal. That's what happens. But at the same time, we got to make tough decisions to actually just split apart from each other. Okay. And that's, that's what happens in divorces. That's what people, you know, like, you know, marriage is. We make the vow that we're going to let be lasting forever. But um, sometimes life, you know, just doesn't happen that way. We got to make tough decisions. So another thing with that is with death. All right. Say you have a pet, you have a dog. Your dog is sick. It happens all the time. Your dog is sick and you ain't got no money to help that dog. I'm saying this from personal experience because I also had a dog that went through this. The dog was sick. We couldn't, we didn't have, it happened to two dogs actually. We didn't have the money to go get the help that the dog needed. And we had to make the tough decision because the dog was suffering. All right. It was visible every day. The dog was suffering and it was, it was very hard to live with, you know, having a sick dog that you want to take care of, but you can only do so much because they're going through the process of dying. You know, like their body, you can see it start, you know, they can't even hold their, they can't even hold their bowel syndromes in, you know, they have to, um, processes, they have to, they're letting it all out on the carpet, you know, you don't want to live with that, but you love your dog. You're like, oh man, so what do you do? You know, what do you do with that? They're not eating, they're, they're barely drinking. So the loving thing to do, since you love your dog so much, you got to make tough decisions. So we had to let that dog go, not because we hated the dog, not because we are bad people. We're not bad. We're not bad owners for our pets. OK, our pets love us. We love our dogs. We love our pets. It doesn't have to be a dog, but most people have dogs. Um, I like cats, too. I like I like all animals. But, you know, we the dog had to die. OK, and it was out of love that the dog died because the dog has a soul just like us as a mammal and it has a soul and um, I can't speak for everything but I know that animals have souls just like we do and they have a consciousness they have feelings so that dog was both of those dogs were relieved of their suffering when we let them go and it was hard we cried about it you know it's very sad however we were happy to know that the dog was in a better place. We don't know exactly what, but we know that the soul has lifted out of that body, has been broken from that bondage of that body, it relieved of the suffering, and now is going somewhere else and is living a better life. The light is expansive and it can do more things now. It can choose to reincarnate into another dog and become our pet again, or it can choose to, you know, be with God, or it can choose 
to reincarnate as something else to learn some more lessons, you know, but it's just knowing that that dog is free to do more things now is is good enough for us and it's love. Same thing happens with humans when they're comatose on the bed and they don't have. What's up? And they don't have the will or not the will. Yeah, they don't have the will for themselves to do things for themselves. And you know that they're dying. You know that they don't want to live that way. They're like they're co they're conscious of what's going on. They conscious that they are a vegetable and they can't do anything for themselves. So they want to die and you can't pay the bills. You don't want to see them live like that. You don't want to see them suffer like that. You want to see them be happier. You know, you don't want to see them go 20 years just on a bed, you know, just doing nothing and being conscious of it the whole time. No. So we make tough decisions for love, out of love. We want you to be free. And that's what I was expressing in my video. So for people that was watching my video on abortion and in the future that will watch the video on abortion and think that I'm trying to support abortion, I am not supporting abortion. I don't support death. I don't support killing. I don't support murdering. murdering. I don't support harming those who can't help themselves. I believe in giving people chances. I believe in freedom. I believe in life. I love life and I support all that stuff. That's what my whole life is about. My whole life is about supporting life and supporting a healthy lifestyle. So with that said, when I talk about abortion, the reason why I was talking about it in that way, in such a way, is because I, I you know, it's, it's a law that when it comes to a human body, we are all our own universe. We live in a universe, but this whole thing is a universe in itself. Okay, there's things going on all up inside of me that you will never know. And you can never know because it's, it's for me. It's private. It's between me and my creator. Everything that's going on. You don't know if I communicate with this elbow. Me and this elbow might have a really good, you never know that I can talk to my elbow. You'll never know if my heart is, you know, it's so sensitive that, you know, it, it, it lets me know things about other people. You'll never know that because it's my universe. So same thing when somebody has a pregnancy, you don't know what's going on, the communication between that child and the, and, and the mom. You don't know. It's her universe. It's between her, the creator, and that thing that they are creating together. Okay? At that, when, when the man has sex, like, sex doesn't, it needs a man, but it really doesn't need a man. The man is just there to spark the process. Men are not really needed uh, for pregnancy, but they are very useful in life and, and building of nations and, and, and guarding a family, protecting a family and raising a family. I'm not saying that men are special, but when it comes to women, they have a very special role that men don't really have a part in. Only women do. And when it comes to women, only the individual, even other women, even other women cannot tell another woman what to do with her body. Do you guys understand? Nobody can tell anybody what to do with their body. Now, out of love, when you see somebody harming themselves, you want to help them. You want to talk to them. You want to talk some sense to them. You know, repetition helps. Repeating it over and over and over again. You know, hey, don't eat that food. Hey, you're looking fat. Don't eat that. You know, hey, you know, you need to watch what you're doing. Hey, you need to watch how you talk to people. You know, hey, you're about to do this. I think it's a bad idea. You're about to get an abortion. I think that's a bad idea. I have the right to express my opinion to that woman if she's about to get an abortion. But the point that I'm trying to make is that I have the free will to do what I to say what I want to say. But at the same time, I have to respect the woman. I have to respect what's going on with her, because maybe you don't know what's going on with her, that she is very sick and that that baby in her is actually dead already. Or she knows that if she tries to go through with the labor, is not going to actually is you know it's not going to happen because she's so sick and she's going to die from so you don't know what's going on through her mind you have to respect her decisions and i have to repeat this over and over again you just don't know you do not know all you know is what's going on with you you don't know what's going on with the other person at all now the only way you know is if they tell you but still you don't even know there's things going on in this world that we will never understand. Another point, 
is why do people die? Why do people kill each other? People get so emotional, like things are imbalanced. You get so emotional over an abortion, but you don't get emotional over this person dying. It's the same thing. Kids die every day. Babies get eaten every day. It's true. It happens. Now, I haven't seen it happen personally. That's because I, you know, I'm fortunate enough to not have that, but I'm pretty I'm sure it happens. There's so much in this world that goes on. There's there's very slim chance that anything that you can think of doesn't happen. So, abortions what well, well, back to what I was trying to say. When somebody when somebody kills another person, that is bad, right? We shouldn't allow people to kill other people. We should advise against it. We should avoid it at all costs. But guess what? It happens. All right. And sometimes people have reasons for killing other people. I met a woman one time where she had murdered somebody and I instantly started judging her within me. I was like, you seem like such a good person. You killed your husband. That was shocking. I never met somebody that killed their husband before. And I automatically started to think that they were bad, that they're maybe they're a psychopath, like how I see in the movies, like they look so nice and know how to talk well and look pretty. But at the same time, they got this evil thing about them. Maybe I shouldn't mess with them. That was going through my mind. Right. But I had to realize as she was talking to me about it, she was explaining from a uh, from a, a side of love. She loved her husband. She loved being with that man. She got married to him. OK, she got married to him. And she killed him out of self-defense. He attacked her. They got into some argument. He attacked her and she stabbed him with a knife. Out of self-defense. It was probably a mistake. It was probably a complete accident. It was heat of the moment type stuff that, hey, you know, you're attacking me. Well, I'm going to do everything I can to protect myself. I didn't mean to kill you, though, type stuff. It's out of love. But guess what? It was meant to happen because it happened. How do I know that? How do we all know that? Because we can't go back into the past and change it. That's exactly how we know. We cannot, anything that happens and everything that happens right now, once it happens, it's done. It's complete. We move on. Life keeps going. We, we're living in a linear timeline the way that we live. We cannot go into the past. So once something happens, it's never by coincidence. It's always for meaning and it always has a purpose and it's always meant to happen. Always. That's why we have destinies. Destinies. We have things that we need to go through in life. When you come into this life, it's already planned out for you. Now, that doesn't mean you have free will to choose where you're going to go. But within that journey, you're going to complete that journey. OK, it gets complex. So I want to give a shout out to Conscious Daughter again. She had made some really good comments on the last video. So go check out the, uh, the last video I did about abortion, the one I'm speaking about right now. And go check out her comments. Um, she comes from a place of being an experienced mother and coming from a place of of love, you know, love for her children and love for other other women. So I, I go go uh, support her and look at her channel. She got a lot of good stuff to share. Also on her channel, she's got a lot of good stuff to share. And um, another commenter that had commented was Lucky Ben Hebrew. Um, he's also a pretty knowledgeable brother. Uh, so you guys can go check him out. Um, Lucky Ben Hebrew. And um, he seems like he he he's very confident about what he knows and what he has to say. Um, probably a lot of it goes over my head because I'm I'm not like that religious. I'm more of like a spiritual, logical philosophy type of guy, but I am reading the Bible and I am I am trying to uh, learn how to, you know, get more of that um, that book knowledge, more of that, that sacred text knowledge. You know what I'm saying? So that I can speak more from uh, a deeper a wisdom thing. And he was trying to talk to me about will and how um, like it's never good for a woman to get abortion. And, you know, I encourage people to make comments like that and to uh, to king to king in discussion, not even comments on my video, but just, you know, you can make your own video in comment to my video and we can we can uh, start a discussion that way. And then other people can join in because it'll be more immersive once you make your own video 
and you put your face on it, you know. So I think I made my point just to be clear about it. I do not support abortion. I don't support death. I don't support killing. I don't support division. However, all these things happen in life and they go on for life. So even though I don't support death, I do support death in a way that it's it's needed for life. It's a cycle. We go through cycles. OK, there's life and then there's death. But really, life and death are one. And then there's life and then, you know, there's supporting life and then there's there's killing life. But really, they're one. You know, and then there's there's Jesus and then there's Satan. They really are one. And then there's unity and they're just division. They're really one. You guys get it? Why? Why is this? Why is this? Uh, why is this gesture such a universal gesture? Because everything is one. Shout out to Santos Bonacci for the secretism. I'm out. Oh, and last thing to be clear. You cannot, you cannot tell another person what to do with their body because at the end of the day, they're going to do what they got to do and they're free to do it and you must respect it, okay? You don't have to like it. You don't have to agree with it. You don't got to support it, but you got to respect it because it was meant to happen. Help your brothers and sisters out if they're doing something wrong and you keep it moving. So with that, I...